right. Very good. Okay, now recording. About a minute to go. We're gonna get started. Hi, Tyler. Nice to see you on the chat. I hope. Thank you for doing this great job. Ready We're ready. Sounds good. Okay. Welcome, everybody. My name is Ani Martinez. I'm the community manager for the Remake Learning Network. I'm joined today by the Institute of Technology School for Life program and Mary Claire Reynolds from the Learning Facilities Association of America. We have a great panel and conversation set up for today. I'm going to walk through a little bit more information about the Remake Learning Network today, and then we'll hear more from everyone else. Just a little bit of housekeeping. If you have questions and or concerns, just hover over the bottom of your screen. You should be able to see a chat room, the dialogue box. You can type in questions um, and share ideas there. You can also raise your hand enough as a way to flag our attention. Do that at any point. Um, and then I'm sure also at the end, we will have time for more Q&A uh, by sharing a little more about the Remake Learning Network. Let's see if it'll load. There we go. So the Remake Learning Network is comprised of about 500 organizations in the region in Pennsylvania. We function because the world has become more complex and interconnected than it ever has been before. While reading and writing and arithmetic are still essential, undoubtedly, they are no longer enough to prepare young people to thrive in our digital age. So we know that youth today are pursuing knowledge differently, developing their identities and interests. So about 10 years ago, we started uh, an informal conversation mm -hmm. over, over breakfast in September. And over the last 10 years, it really slowly formed um, a collective of individuals in the region that wanted to create new partnerships, test out new ideas, and think about how kids could be learning. Um, being hands-on and maker learning, digital media, youth voice connected anywhere, anytime, and any place. This loosely affiliated set of organizations then called but uh, early in 2017, we looked around and we, and we thought to ourselves, wow, we've really done a lot of work to establish the culture here in the region, in our region. And so we took a community process and we really thought about what the yeah, engaging, relevant, and equitable learning practices in a time of unprecedented all learners so that they can grapple with technology and media. Uh, how does our education system rethink learning to become more relevant to students? in the present what opportunity gaps are we facing and how can we innovate around them so what does remake learning actually do right we have a we have a 5c approach this one is through catalyzing opportunity uh, we do we do that through occasional micro grant opportunities we also do a lot to make sure that notifications of other grant opportunities that our friends and allies are promoting both locally and nationally and we also help to organize national research grant opportunities. So these would be things like NSF opportunities and larger scale. We also work to convene individuals and organizations. So that would be um, working groups around specific topics like maker educational STEM ecosystem. We also have much more casual and drop-in based opportunities for shared learning experiences like lunch and learns and meetups. Sometimes we bring in experts from around the country like our wonderful panel here. Um, and then we also could Hold larger networking events. We do those a couple times a week, times throughout the year, and that's really where you get to see the breadth of all those different education, industry, government, so on and so forth. We also work to coordinate. So uh, we know that there are redundancies and duplications out there. This is one way that we strive connecting work, both on an individual and organizational level, to really is inspiring new collaboration and need of participation. Finally, we do tons of champion studies and our annual campaign to parents, families, and the community remake learning days. We really see these as opportunities to shine asset-based light on all the work that people are doing. And that's what we do a blog where we produce stories and we also share stories from around the world. We run a newsletter. Org. That's just a very quick and I can just go to remakelearning.org and you can also email me at Tawny. I want to hand the floor over to Mary Claire. 
Oh, thanks so much, Ani. Uh, we are just so happy LDA is this uh, learning event today. So who is LDA? Uh, well, we are 55 years young this year. LDA was started by a group of dedicated and passionate parents and committed professionals working with learning disabilities. State by state across the country, chapters were formed. And in 1963, this national association was born. LDA visualizes a world in which participate fully in society where the incidence of learning disabilities is reduced and where learning disabilities are universally understood and effectively addressed. We are a member to provide information and referral. We have a slew of information available through our website, which is on the next slide. Um, but one way we see this, our vision carried out is through the Assistive Technology Lab, which is showcased annually at our international conference. Through our wonderful partnership with, we provide a platform where attendees can explore strategies and solutions for learning disabilities. We are so grateful to Carolyn Phillips and her team and we will be with them again next month in Atlanta when we have our 55th annual conference. And so I'm happy to turn it over to, to Carolyn and Liz to, to tell you more about thank that. Thank you so much, uh, Mary Claire. And thank you uh, for connecting us with uh, this awesome organization and um, also for your commitment to innovation. Uh, and with LDA, I started when I was actually still in school, uh, which was, I guess, 30 years ago. <laughs> And so um, very, um, LDA has helped me grow professionally, but it's also helped me personally. And so uh, I really appreciate um, this organization uh, and this, this cool collaboration um, that we've got right here with the remake. Uh, it's very, very, very cool. So um, we're going to be talking to you about a lot of things today. Um, basically, uh, we want to look at the, you know, this conversation and have this conversation on the intersection of innovation and learning disabilities. So I'm Carolyn Phillips. We're with the Schools for Life program here at the Tech. Yes. And so we um, obviously are recording this, but we will have slides available and uh, more information for everybody. Um, there's a lot, and our conversation continues, which is good um, when it comes to moving the conversation forward. And so um, what do you, as far as the slides themselves, and we're going to be kind of, we're going to go at a fast pace It's because we have a lot. Um, and we'll just keep moving forward as you flip slides. Does that work? Ah, oh, there you there are. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no worries, no worries. So um, we say this and we mean it. Uh, welcome to the assistive technology revolution. Um, the world around us is evolving. Uh, 30 years ago, when I was a student of technology solutions, I didn't even know the terms. I just knew that there were solutions that I needed um, that I could only dream about. And now they exist in things like uh, They exist in me being able to quickly um, write reports and all that with my voice. Um, they exist also uh, because efficacy is caught up and understand our rights and we're playing, um, all of that together. So what we're going to do in this rights, talk about What's your action plan and, and understanding what assistive technology really is? And that co that conversation, that critical conversation we need. We'll share some cool information about high and low tech, um, you know, mid tech solutions, uh, and also talk about some trends to watch. And there's a lot when we talk about trends to watch. There's a whole bunch happening, which is great. So we'll move on to the next slide. It's coming. No problem. We'll just keep talking if that's okay with everybody. Um, so we are um, at, a, at a place called AMAC. And uh, about that. Sure. So with the Tools for Life mission, we are dedicated to increasing access to and acquisition of assistive technology devices and services. Um, there's an Assistive Technology Act program in every state and country, as well as the six territories. Tools for Life, we're here in Georgia, and we serve all ages and all disabilities. So it's one of the many reasons why I love my job. Um, the range of folks that we serve at Keeps with Our Toes. Carolyn Watson says in her talk that the youngest person that you've been in three, three, which is pretty three. incredible. Yeah. Um, so we really are working with the individual. Um, often, you know, it's about their lifespan, really and truly. There are folks that we've worked with since they were little ones, and now they're right. just having families of their own and creating generations of their families. So it's actually really cool. Um, and we focus on all areas of life. We often say thinking and things. We are positioned here at Awesome uh, Institute of Technology. A lot of our work does focus on education because our relationship with tech. The parents have called our 800 line and with us on our website and says, you know, my little one will be independent on the ground. Um, get down that hand and have toys that are, you know, easily uh, maneuverable um, and all of those things. And we're our job. And so we often say uh, independently and with greater freedom and can stay healthy in the communities that they want to live. So uh, we have those on abilities and that's really what it comes down to. Uh, and that's uh, one of the great things about collaboration with this and this conversation to national level like the learning disabilities um, association, right? Uh, and it's it, and it's amazing having that kind of progressive thought moving forward. Well, I got my job is because I have abilities, right? So I have dyslexia, yeah, auditory processing, um, from Georgia. <laughs> but there are the gifts that come with that. Um, so we've got to have the conversation and really help people uh, not just understand what those are, but focus on them and um, be able to push conversation forward and uh, figure out innovative paths for every single person. Uh, what our learning are. So the difference do have enough time, money, and resources. It's just a matter of us coming together and working together and figuring that out. 
Um, also, in this conversation, I want to make sure that y'all know that you really do just a little difference, but the difference. Uh, my son was talking um, this weekend on his own learning disabilities, and, and he said, so old school. And it's because they were talking about, oh, that's going to be a struggle for you. And he's like, no, mm, I actually just see the world differently with your life. And he's like, oh, no, it's going to be fine, <laughs> you know, because there's all kinds of cool technology. And so, you know, he starts showing uh, the technology. And this is uh, somebody forward. So, we know that it's natural. It's a natural part of the human experience. I love the way you're doing this. And this is part of the Assistive Technology Act. Yeah, I absolutely love this. Um, you know, we often say it's our favorite piece of legislation. It's a beautiful 108 364. This is the Tech Act that supports, that funds School for Life and all the assistive technology programs. And we also say that this is a guiding principle that we believe in. And what it is, is it says disability is an act of individuals to be independent, enjoy self-determination, to make choices, to go to school, to have a job, to just be fully included in the mall that they want to shop at, to uh, uh, to vote, to uh, eat at the restaurant that they want to eat at. So to be fully encompassed in society. And to me, this, again, it says disability is natural. It's, we're all uh, unique. We bring something new to the table, something unique to the table. If we were all the same, it'd be incredibly boring. Um, and so that's what we really have to focus on is um, just all the unique aspects that each of us bring to the table. And when we're talking about um, remake learning and we're talking about innovation, um, a lot of it is that it starts here. Um, it starts with understanding that, um, yes, we are different. Um, just, and we've got to have that innovative way of looking at it. Uh, and really that pride, if you like, um, you know, it's out of the, you know, out of the shadows into the light, um, which I really like. So, and we'll move to the next slide. And as we said, we'll, we'll be moving um, relatively quick, quickly through this. Um, and, but we do want to know what you have to, what you have to think uh, and what you have to say as to technology it makes life easier. Um, I use that I write um, and Mary Claire reads them and I'm often writing them with my voice or, you know, anybody sends me an email. I'm often listening to those things. Uh, it, it, a lot of other people are doing it and it makes their life productive and have a balanced life and have that work life, um, you know, understanding so that I'm not working too much or getting burnt out. Um, for a person with a disability, assistive technology makes life, makes all of it possible. Um, I've yet to meet a student who really feels like they're rocking it, um, who doesn't use, uh, that has a disability that doesn't use any assistive technology at all, high tech solutions, you know, all of that. And so when we're thinking about remaking learning, in my opinion, um, it really does come down to uh, understanding how do people learn and then how do we utilize uh, technology to transformationally change, whether it's in maker space or whether it's in these types of environments and how do we push the work to the next slide. All right. Okay, so this is just a little bit more about uh, Tools for Life, uh, which is Georgia's Assistive Technology Act program. We are, are here at Georgia Tech under the College of Design, and AMAC um, focuses on alternative media. So we have a number of different uh, programs here within AMAC uh, that focus on Braille production. We have a, a very involved captioning team that helps students when they're in the classroom to actually be able to uh, see text being spoken by their instructor. Um, and then they're also, you know, obviously able to be in class. Um, all that's done through Skype, so our folks are here on site. They're actual and innovative. And what I like about it is that students are in the classroom, and they don't look different than anybody else in the class. They've got their laptop, they've got their tablet, and they're able to receive um, captioning services through that. Um, so we talked about Braille captioning. E-text production um, is huge. That's at the heart of what AMAC is. And so basically what that is is taking uh, books and paper festival formats, if you will. So that way somebody can uh, read it on their phone, on their tablet, on their mobile device, um, what have you. Um, you know, Carolyn and I, uh, she's taught me so much in my life, especially in my career here with Tools for Life. The technology that we use um, often is just a crossover. I use my voice for everything. I dictate all my environment. Um, and even using my uh, tablet, my iPhone, my laptop to read documents, uh, to read books, has been absolutely a life change. College uh, here in Atlanta at Georgia State, one semester I had 17 books that I had to carry on my person at any given time. And that was on my wheelchair, on my lap, on my lap tray. I remember going up inclines uh, downtown Atlanta and popping wheelies because the weight of the matter and Mac accessibility that makes it possible for people like me to be able to access those materials. Um, I used to hate uh, open book quizzes um, because everybody uh, everybody loved it because they could easily flip to a page. And for me, I had to go off my memory and the book and flip pages. So again, now having that alternative media, the alternative way of accessing it makes it absolutely amazing. And so we're a great fit here at AMAC Accessibility. As I mentioned, we serve all ages and all disabilities here in Georgia through Tools for Life. And we don't do it on our own. Um, sometimes it feels like it, but we have a whole network of sensors all yeah. across Georgia. Um, and we'll show you a visual of that in just a second. But those the network consists of assistive technology resource centers, our outreach sites, our community partners. We have lending libraries so people can actually borrow equipment before they try it. That actually helps so much with funding um, and just making sure that folks are getting the equipment that they need, making those informed choices, if you will. Uh, funding, education, um, we actually have programs within Tools for Life that can actually assist with funding and acquiring assistive technology. And then, of course, we do a lot of work in the space of reuse of technology and durable medical equipment. So yeah, we can move to the next slide. And what we want you to be aware of is that um, you can, within your own community, get connected 
uh, with your assistive te technology is evolving. And so the Assistive Technology Act programs, the AT3 Center, is um, actually a, it's a website. So it's AT, assistive technology, but AT3 um, center.net. And you can go uh, and explore the different programs um, that are within all of the state. You can borrow some of this technology so that you understand what's the, you know, what are the solutions that exist. And so we can move to the next and we'll just show you a couple of other slides just uh, so you have some idea. I want to give you this visual as well. So see it here. With that in mind, we have our Tools for Life website, and this is a beautiful thing that you have solution site. And so um, it, we want to make sure you're aware of some of these different solutions, uh, especially uh, what some of the apps are and what are some of strategies. Absolutely. Um, so we encourage you to visit our website. You'll find all sorts of information on there when it comes to publications, um, training. We, uh, we post and archive uh, pretty much everything that we do because, we, again, we want to make that accessible to all of you out there. So please visit us. Let us know how we can assist you. Um, if you're in the Atlanta air at AMAC and Tools for Life and just show you around. So, um, yeah, please do reach out. And if you go to the next slide, you can actually just see that map that we were referring to. Mm -hmm. um, and then also understanding, and we do have this app finder, which yes. is super cool. Yes, um, this is on our website. Uh, the app finder is actually really unique. Uh, Martha Russ and our goal, uh, we often joke around that on some of our ideas that we discuss with Carolyn, they're on napkins. I have lots of napkins <laughs> That's that I've right. saved with sketches and notes of <laughs> Carolyn. So, um, you know, the iPhone came out and there was this idea of apps, what are apps? And we talked about, you know, why don't we create a database yeah. that house all the apps out there? Uh, and we've got millions and millions of apps on the market. Mm -hmm. And so our goal, and we've done lots of research um, with the Tools for Life app finder is we bet every single app uh, within this database and this app has apps that are unique to individuals with disabilities but often just mainstream apps that everyone uses that really have those unique features that can be leveraged by folks with disabilities um, so we need to check it out you can search by name pricing platform and there's all sorts of categories books education environmental control um, you know navigational personal care and safety therapeutic aids vision um, all sorts of things so please check it out play around with it leave us a review um, you can also uh, recommend apps and we'll take a look at that yeah and I think um, as we go through this we're going to mm -hmm. show you some examples of some apps but but uh, there are some mainstream apps that are excellent, um, you know, that would not be learned with all, the, all of our senses and all of that. So it's brilliant. Um, so we'll move to the next slide. Idea. Um, and this is just that map we were referring to. And so we encourage you to have trouble with that. You can get in touch with us. You can get in touch with LBA, obviously, um, with our great partners here with Remake. What we wanted to show is, is the visual. Um, a lot of times people don't think about ergonomics um, and how connected that is when we talk about once again remaking learn in classrooms and behind desks and all of those things. Um, so what we try to do is show that there are various ergonomic solutions, ways that you can mount, get your head up, um, sit up, have a great posture, um, even standing, uh, standing desks and, and various uh, uh, different chairs and all of that. So we'll show a little bit more of that. And um, there's oldies but goodies like, uh, you, you know, in one of these photographs you see that there's a talking calculator. But now um, we one of the innovations is convergence. So I have a talking calculator on my iPhone. Um, and so I don't have to carry around 23 different types of technology uh, in order for me to do really well with my job and with my own learning, um, I can actually have them. And we'll move to the next slide. A lot of times people ask us, well, what, what do you mean by assistive technology? And so here's how, what we mean. This is exactly what we mean. Um, and so I'll read this pretty quickly. Assistive technology, or AT as we often say, is any item or piece of equipment that is used to increase, maintain, or improve functional capabilities of individuals with disabilities in all aspects of life, including at work, at, or, including at school, at work, at home, and in the community. And then we talk about the range from low uh, to no tech, light tech, to high tech devices or equipment. I often say, just as an assistive technology user, that pretty much any piece of equipment that can help me be more independent or achieve a task at hand, I can we can go to the next slide that shows a little bit of the assistive technology continuum, if you will. Um, and you can click, I think, three more times on yep. me if you'd like, um, if you can. And so what that shows is some examples of low or no tech, middle tech, and high tech. And so on the left side, you'll see under low tech, it's things like pencil grips or highlighters, tape, color coding, uh, color trans. Um, we move to middle tech and we kind of bump up that level, if you will. So things like word prediction, spell checkers, uh, Carol mentioned talking calculators, yeah. um, ebooks, organizers, adaptive keyboards, mice, toys. Um, and this is also tech. Things like computers, uh, laptops, tablets, uh, smartphones, um, OCR, op optical character recognition mm -hmm. scanners, uh, speech output devices, um, you know, voice uh, recognition, environmental controls, and then these are apps that are over $100 as well too. And so it's important to understand just the range, the continuum. Um, this individual can only use low tech or only use middle tech or only use high tech. Um, as somebody that has upwards of 30 pieces of assistive technology that I use every single day to be independent, that's the time I wake up, that's the time that I go to bed. I've got Velcro in my life. I've got, um, you know, sticky uh, kind of those uh, raised uh, yeah. like little nuts for switches that help me access switches easier. Um, you know, all the way to high tech, like my wheelchair that has pretty awesome features. Um, I can elevate 12 inches. So sure when can. we are presenting, I can be up to Carolyn's level up there with her in front of a class. So it's important just to kind of think about the whole individual. Um, and it looks like we have a question and this is a conversation. And so we definitely uh, entertain and invite your questions. Um, and it, I think you're asking um, about school districts and how we work with them. Yes. And this is, uh, do you want to read the question? And then I'm happy. To sure, sure. So do you work with school districts to help them work with their students? Absolutely. And great timing for that question. Um, because uh, this, 
slide in particular uh, shares a little bit of that. Um, what we do is we uh, work with folks um, so that need, um, sometimes we're building capacity within a school system um, and, and also letting them uh, borrow those devices, provide those devices, helping them select even feature matching. A lot of times people have the right device, they just don't know what features they need. Um, and once again, a lot of people need to have that bimodal input here at See It, Do It. Um, you know, our trimodal, uh, you know, experience, then it's important that we understand what features exist. And so, yes, we absolutely work with school districts. Um, we work with parents, we work with individuals themselves, um, and really helping folks, you know, when it comes to that feature matching, um, maintaining, uh, we even, um, there's a lot of services that we have um, providing that technical assistance and, and all of that. Um, and a lot of the other ATAC programs, assistive technology programs do this too. So yes, that is uh, the answer to that question. And uh, also continuing to go to LDA so that they can um, experience and learn and keep uh, up to date. Um, and then also um, our labs, our assistive technology labs, and engage and, and move the conversation forward, which is good. Yes, so. and we host two events every year, um, Georgia Assistive Technology in Education. That's actually here at Georgia Tech mm -hmm. at the Student Center, so great location. Um, and that's just a one day to host that with the Metro Atlanta AT Consortium. Um, but again, just a great uh, day spending uh, interacting with vendors, all focused on education. They've got uh, technology and resources available, but just great um, instructional workshops as well too. And then also every June, um, we have co-host and that focus so that uh, stands for the Institute designed for educating all students and yes. so um, we've been co-hosting that for upwards of I think it's been up six a year yep. um, and that's a great event we uh, surpassed a thousand attendees um, and lots <laughs> of great uh, information when it comes to emerging technologies as well and we can move to the next slides mm -hmm. And keep those co those questions coming. So, so when we're talking about innovation, one of the things we absolutely need to pay attention to, spe specifically when we talk about learning disabilities, but actually when we talk about school design, plays an, a big role. Um, we are here at Georgia Tech, mm -hmm. and one of the things that I feel like uh, is a real positive of being here, one of many things, um, is being able to influence the next designers, the next generation of people who are developing technology. And uh, you know, it's cool to see folks leave our classrooms and our labs, and then off they head to big name companies that you're familiar with, and then we see um, the results. You know that indeed they have been inclusive in their design and they're asking gosh you know um, so here's here's a chalkboard and how do I actually turn this chalkboard into something that can be interactive for Liz to use but also for me to use um, and and have that in a digital format and then can I actually get things are possible and, and that's a real example which is very cool so universal design um, it makes things safer easier more community. everybody is designing for the whole community and uh, there's an example there's a picture and so, um, you know, sometimes people think of it as just a, you know, a built environment solution. Um, you know, it's that hand so um, further into the virtual environment. So it's, it's how do you um, create an accessible app? How do you create um, websites that are accessible and just moving the conversation forward? So, and we can move to the next. So we don't want to talk just about all cool, cool technology right. without <laughs> talking about, well, how do you actually acquire it? Um, you know, it's great that these things exist. So do you want to talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. Um, so we often say we're not just going to show someone, um, you know, options for, let's say, uh, different types of tablets out there, Android, different mm -hmm. iPads, and then be like, okay, well, good luck with that. Um, so <laughs> part of our mission is to uh, discuss access to and acquisition of. So really and truly, how can that person then um, acquire that equipment, whether they're borrowing it long term, or they're actually owning that piece of equipment. And so we have somebody on our team who's an assistive technology funding uh, specialist. And so um, Danny oversees um, three main uh, acquisition programs, uh, Creditable, Dollars and Cents, and G-Trade. And Creditable is all about a low interest loan for assistive technology. When all of those grants, uh, donations, all the resources are kind of used up for an individual, if you will, Creditable is a last, um, is a great option um, as well. And so that is something that has to be paid back, but we will work with the individual to make that work for them. Dollars and Cents is a great database on our website. Um, this is not just for Georgia. We encourage you folks all over the country to dive in deep to Dollars and Cents, but it is a database that houses resources for funding assistive technology, but it's also a resource in general. Um, that houses all sorts of uh, helpful information. So, uh, you know, terminology, a glossary of terms, uh, example letters of medical necessity, even just uh, example letters of what you would take to a psychologist or your doctor or a counselor. Um, so just really understanding your rights, knowing your resources. And then G-Trade is Georgia's assistive technology online equipment exchange. It's pretty much like how Craigslist is. You can go on, um, you can place an ad for free for something that you need. Um, the whole service is free. Uh, and then you can also just shop around to see what folks are posting as well too. So lots of great, um, you know, information out there and just other ways of acquiring assistive technology. So definitely encourage you all to check out those resources. So, um, um, if you move to the next slide, um, when we're talking in inclusion really happen and what are those innovative approaches, um, it, it really is moving from information to action. And so, uh, you know, having or knowing that you have a specific learning style or um, that you have some functional capabilities that you need some assistance with, you get tired or there's some fatigue or, or you have a mobility or disability evaluations, uh, that one-to-one -one assessment, um, how do you take that information and then move that information from information into action? And how do you figure out, um, you know, what it is that you need to acquire and what you need to try and all of that? Um, and that's one of the things that uh, we're excited that there is a lot of progressive movement that way. And so we can move to the next slide. And 
So once you're re, you know, remaking learning in general for everybody, um, it's, you know, how do we make sure that we're not doing a cookie cutter approach, um, that we really are customizing um, to the individual. Uh, no two folks are, are alike ready to really help, um, you know, get those skills out there and really uh, make everybody, you know, help everybody live their best life and, and learn their best way. And so we'll move to the next slide. And so keep all these things in mind as we're moving forward. So we've got some things that we just want to cover, things that you need to think about uh, when it comes to selecting um, assistive technology, and we can go to the next slide. Um, one of those is, uh, I think that a, a lot of times we meet people, um, and you can take the learning disability piece out, you can take the disability piece out, um, but I see it all the time within the learning disability community, is that they're on the fast track, and they're frustrated, or they're anxious, stressed, you know, they have tension, fast track, and so that becomes a barrier to learning, and so there are solutions even for that, um, whether it's coming up with uh, just a different approach, um, a way to help somebody with their memory, um, or pay their bills, a way to read the book but actually understand it faster, um, you know, all of those things, and so uh, what we try to do is help people get off that fast track. Uh, you can move to the next slide too, and that talks a little bit more um, about our methodology uh, when it comes to, you know, how do we look at the human and the, the, the activity, the context, and what's the technology that we need to put into there. Um, and so there's, you know, multiple things you want to look at. Uh, a lot of times, and I don't, I want to caution you as well, this issue, and I'm going to buy everything, and right. no, don't do that. Um, really look at, you know, what are the strengths, what are the weaknesses, we are, we're all unique, um, and what are the activities, what is it you're really trying to accomplish? I'm trying to really re-engineer the classroom, or re-engineer a book, re-engineer the way that you're approaching um, your own education. This is uh, another way that people's environment task who we'll be with next week um, actually came up with this and it's just helpful. So uh, you can use the human activity, um, you know, uh, context and tools, uh, use the set framework within the educational environment and you can move to the next one. And it just gives you a little bit more of the framework and some of the questions um, that you might want to ask and you might want to hit that a couple of times I think to um, move that slide. There you go, keep going. All right, keep going, keep going. And this um, basically is for you to just understand. That's okay, you don't have to, okay, look at you. Good <laughs> job. Um, it just gives you some ideas as to what are some of the things you need to consider um, when you're talking about uh, and then how do you figure out what really can work um, so that everybody can you know be successful and so what are the functional areas of concern um, what activities are they the person the student supposed to be doing and then uh, even thinking about what are those features and so we can move to the next and you can just keep going um, because we're going to jump into some more of the really cool things um, when we're talking about you know thinking about some of the solutions um, ergonomics absolutely has to be a part of the conversation um, we're finding that there are more and more issues with ergonomics and that, that affects um, people's uh, learning. Um, if you're slumped over, then you're not going to have that blood flow, you're not going to have the oxygen, um, you know, your quality of vo your voice quality is going to be an issue, all of those things. So paying attention to all of that. And uh, so ergonomics, and we'll move to the next. So when we're re-engineering classroom and learning environments, um, you know, sit to stand. Uh, the CDC said that sitting is actually the new smoking, um, that people are sitting too much. And so uh, think about that when you're talking about, so getting up and moving around is a very helpful thing. Uh, and we can move to the next slide. And these are just some other examples of um, technology that can help with that. Really cool um, chair uh, that's got a ball in it, but it's very safe because the ball's not going to move around, which is great. Um, you can also have, uh, you know, uh, another wiggles with you, um, which is very helpful. Um, and there's just other solutions uh, that you know uh, what some of the solutions are um, when it comes to sit, sit, sitting. Um, this, this, and it gives you all kinds of cool feedback, and they're fun and colorful and stack, stackable. Um, you can move them. So when we talk about universal design for multiple folks, which is nice. Um, yeah, it gives a little rock to it, and um, so that's very cool. And so um, we can move to the next slide. And this is one of those solutions uh, that I think a lot of times people, um, they go out and they just buy out and doing that little research, um, but mobile tablets and e-readers. Um, there's some questions here of uh, when it comes to learning, what is it that you need it to do? Um, does it read out loud? Not all of them do. Do I need apps with it? Can I change the colors? We have a lot of folks that have issues with color and color either speeds up or slows down the brain. Um, and some people can't even see colors, you know, so uh, thinking about that. Can I change the line space? Are textbooks? Can I use this for multiple things? So innovation is definitely there, but if you don't know the questions, um, and here are some of the questions, um, then, you know, then it's it's not necessarily going to meet you where you need to be. And so just thinking some of those things uh, those things through. Right, and I was thinking earlier when you were talking, um, for example, we do have, uh, you know, folks that come in to say, I need an iPad. Um, and they are just sold on that. But as Carolyn was talking about, these are great questions to ask. And when you are incorporating things like the hat and assessment or a demonstration, they're like, you know what, I don't really like that iPad anymore. <laughs> that really, you know, I'd rather go this different direction. So really just uh, thinking bigger picture, uh, begin with the end in mind as we always try to do. Yeah, yeah. So we can move to the next, speaking of the iPad. Um, and and uh, there are some things that you need to think about when it comes to um, what is the best, what makes the most sense. Um, one of the things about the iPad that we do like 
is that it's so intuitive. Um, and it does add before he was passing, he was, before he died, um, like a couple of days before he died, the iPad uh, had come out and he was playing uh, grandson. And so it's pretty cool that it was intuitive enough for um, that, that range of age to be able to get something out of this and be able to do a lot of ways when it comes to accessibility. Um, they were one of the first uh, to actually have accessibility, a piece of equipment um, or a solution and get my phone and be able to have all at the same time that, that anybody else gets their phone and that I can have it uh, read to me and I can have, I can speak into it and I can do all kinds of things with it. Um, at the same time, that's huge when it also comes to equality that's happened, I think. So we can move to the next and we talk a little bit about the accessibility features. And if y'all have any other questions, we absolutely um, would love to answer those. I think there's a question here. Oh, there is. So it's uh, with events like game jams or design or hackathons. Yes. Do you want me to answer that? Or? Okay. So um, we do have uh, relationships with hackathons, um, which is a lot of fun. And so often we're working with folks either get hers um, or uh, actually participating in some of the hackathons. Being a subject matter expert um, has also uh, been a role that we've had. Um, and we've hosted uh, hackathons too, uh, which is great. And then also with some very small companies. Uh, and it's been a lot of fun. And so, um, yeah, so we do have a, a good relationship in that space. Um, we're big believers also in gaming. I think that's one of the areas, once again, when we're talking about learning and, um, and remaking learning, I think, is uh, really learned as a result of that. Um, there are chemicals re released in our brain um, whenever we actually um, win a game, and that can be a great thing. So, for example, um, and one of the studies that we're wanting to do is around that. Because anecdotally, we have seen um, that some somebody will um, take it, they can play a game before they take the test, and it, the game's not even associated with that learning, and then yet they do better on the test because it's relaxed them, um, they feel like they're a champion, they're rock stars, and then they feel different. There's also problem solving um, that comes about uh, when it comes to um, uh, playing some of the games and figuring out, and that sense of community. So. Um, and Tori, can you grab that for us? It's called Reality is Broken. Uh, and it's all about gaming. And that's it right there. Thank you, Tori. Um, and so this one, why games make us bad? So um, it's worth checking out. Uh, but there's a whole uh, piece in there about the positive impact it has for folks that have um, learning challenges or, or other types of disabilities. So the built-in accessibility features, uh, we encourage folks to know about those uh, because a lot of times um, people don't even know that these things exist. Yeah. So, and there are quite a lot, um, as you can see from those lists, there's everything from voiceover, Zoom and Magnifier, you can invert colors, you can um, assistive touch, uh, subtitles and captioning. Guided access, which basically means that you can turn off certain features um, and just have a student or an individual focus on one speed, switch access, even braille displays. Um, all yeah. that is just built right in to our iOS devices, yeah. which is really nice. Um, that's ready to go. Yeah, I wonder if y'all knew that those even exist in there, um, and there are ways that you can actually do that. So, for example, um, if you want to have uh, your phone read text out loud, often when we're face-to-face, -face, we're explaining, this is how you do this. When we're in the lab at LDA, this is often what we're doing is helping people set this up. Um, so you would go to settings, and then to general, and then to accessibility, and then you go to speech. And all you have to do is actually tap on that so you can toggle the switch to turn it on. And then um, when you go back, all you have to do is hold your and then it'll actually um, speak that selected text. Um, you can speed it up or slow it down, you can customize it however you need. Um, this is something I use hundreds of times throughout the day, and it's one of those solutions that really does make a difference. So, All right, and you can move to the next. Um, there are all sorts of Android tablets out there. Um, I will say there are more yes. different types of Android tablets, um, which is a lot. It can be a little overwhelming. Um, the thing that I do like about Android is that there are a range of sizes. Um, you know, with iPad, quite a range out there. Um, and so there are lots of different options as well to you. Um, with, uh, and you can do more also with Android um, as far as customization, working with third parties available. There are some accessibility features that are built in, others that you have to download. So it does take up with Android as well too. So we just wanted to, to put that out there for you all to consider as well. So we can jump to the next slide. Oh. oh, I'm a big user. Yeah. There are lots of other solutions that are out there too, but the Surface deserves just a pause so we can talk about it uh, because it allows for, um, I think, a, a lot of use in a lot of different environments. And so when we're talking about learning, uh, we don't think about it just within the classroom. I think a lot of times people just think that's where all the learning occurs. Um, the nice, take it anywhere. Um, it's uh, also got some really cool features when it comes to being magnetic. So if you have fine motor skill issues, some, some folks we work with with learning disabilities um, have a difficult time with fine motor skills and they end up breaking off words and things like that. Um, that's not exclusive to folks with learning disabilities. That's that's an issue again because it's magnetic. Um, same thing with the charger. It's got all kinds of built-in accessibility features uh, and it also has um, a lot of intuitive uh, flow to it which is great. So um, we encourage you to check it out and see if it's different environments that we work um, that we work in. And it looks like somebody, um, what does it say there? I just bought a Surface Book. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> yes, very good, very good. So, so when we're thinking about, you know, some of the solutions that are built in, but also the, those that are available, Microsoft OneNote 
super cool. Um, and once again, uh, it, it's smarter learning. Um, you can type, write, draw. You can take uh, notes in a very different way. You can use a stylus or your finger. You can search, um, you know, basically uh, and clip from different websites um, to pictures uh, and, you know, various ideas. And it really uh, is nice because you can bring students together, bring people together, learners together in a collaborative space, um, which is great. And so uh, once again, you know, thinking about what exists out there and a great job listening. And so this is an example of that because they're, they're like, what can we do in the educational space? So you can move to the next. I'm LG solution. So we just wanted to put some visuals out there so you all understood what we were talking about. So you can see on the left hand side, um, it's a simple photo album, but what it, so anybody that has difficulty with sequencing routines, um, this is something that's considered very low tech, um, very easy to pull together. There's an image of color overlays right in the middle over on the right hand on the bottom uh, lamp or just um, you know, angled at a better position. So lots of different ways um, to look at assistive technology solutions. Um, we have pulled together, uh, you know, multiple day workshops um, all about make and takes. And so, um, you know, people are Lowe's or any kind of store like that in your community just to get those quick solutions. Um, so don't forget that low-tech AP solutions are definitely a thing and we absolutely encourage utilizing uh, low-tech AP. They are a thing um, for sure. So very good. All right, so let's move to the next. And we'll talk just, a, you know, once again, looking at the low-tech solutions for writing, um, you know, all kinds of things, including putting a, a pen uh, or a pencil through a tennis ball. Um, and then that way you can actually use uh, more of your hand. Um, there's all kinds of ergonomic pens and um, pencil grips. And we can move to the next. And um, we have some other ideas when it comes to writing. And, and what really, at times, um, you know, we get stuck that, oh, this pen is, you know, that's how we all write or that's how we all take notes. Um, the live scribe actually takes that to a di different level. Uh, you, it actually can record, um, which is awesome. And so, uh, and then you can actually uh, capture, you can search, you can share your handwritten notes in a digital format. Um, and it's great because a lot of ours change the classroom for them. And that's, that's huge. And so we need to keep pushing this, you know, kind of conversation. And then there's the Echo um, and then Scribe 3, uh, both very helpful. Uh, not just one type of technology, that there's many um, ways to get to that same solution. Uh, and it's just figuring out what works best for you. So, and so you can move to team solutions too, that have really uh, jumped in and changed uh, the way that we learn. Rewordify.com is one of my favorites. And so you can actually, and then put it in the website and then it actually will transform it into, um, by rewordifying um, a, a different uh, way of, you know, a different uh, format um, and different words. So it changes the reading level, uh, which is great, but it keeps the context the same. For folks that need more plain English, um, it can also help as as far as understanding uh, and making that relationship between this more complex way of saying something and the simpler way of saying something. So definitely worth checking out. Um, once again, a mainstream solution. So we'll move to the next. Um, Bookshare, uh, it has been around for years, um, but yet we still find that a lot of people don't even know about this. Um, uh, you, you know, um, a document uh, that actually says, yes, you have vision related disabilities or physical disabilities or learning disabilities. Um, but once you have that documentation, uh, then you can utilize this for forever. Um, I joined early, early on, and I continue to benefit from this. Uh, and pretty much every school that I work with, uh, this is one of those solutions that I talk to. It's got free membership, and yet you have so much access um, to the textbooks. And we can move to the next. And Mary Claire added a note that Bookshare will be at LBA in Atlanta. Yay, we like that. Yeah, we do. Yes. Um, Audible is another one of those uh, mainstream solutions. Um, it's, uh, it's very helpful because uh, all on Audible and I've got two on Bookshare. And so uh, it's, it's helpful because these are read by um, professional narrators, um, Hollywood stars, what have you. Um, you can listen to them anywhere. And this, uh, the number of, um, but uh, those of us who learn this way, it's been invaluable. And so we just wanna make sure we give them a shout out. So, and I'm so glad there we go. Yeah. Learning A also, right? Yes, very good. Um, and this is another one of those. They have uh, been in this community for years and years, and they continue to push the conversation forward. So um, they, you can get textbooks and then have them in uh, where it highlights, where it can be read out loud. Um, they continue to evolve, and it's a very valuable resource. And so um, free trial, um, check it out. And we can move to the next. All right. Do you want to talk about our friend Alexa? Sure. And I think you can click um, maybe a few more times or one more. Um, so we just wanted to highlight uh, Amazon Echo or Alexa devices. And so we've got a list here um, of what they are. Um, it's actually really cool just to see uh, how much is coming out of Amazon when it comes to the Echo products, if you will. But um, Echo is listening, if you will. Um, you can uh, ask it questions like how do you spell certain words? What's your commute in? Um, if you've got all your personal settings set up, um, you know, adding things to your calendar um, to utilize it to control your environment. So at home, I've got it set up where I can 
turn on the TV, I can go straight to Netflix, I can YouTube videos, I can pull up a web browser just to do what's indoors and all sorts of cool things like that. So I'm definitely encourage you to check out um, the Amazon Echo products. And then those are just visuals of the new products that are out on the well. Yes, all kinds of cool things that are out there. All right. So I think that a lot of times, um, especially in, in uh, learning environments, that we don't um, know how to relax and we don't know, uh, you know, I, I see a lot of students that are stressed out. And so um, one of the things we've been focusing on is promoting uh, positive like mental health, you know, how do you um, control your breathing? Um, what, what is stress and how can you reduce the stress in your life? Um, some of that is through organization breathing um, and also understanding that we have a mind-body connection um, that needs to be recognized. It's, some people even say mind-body-spirit, right? So I probably do to relax is it, uh, a, it walks you through like inhale and then exhale. And, you know, so you're breathing and, and you're um, really working on that skill. And, and believe it or not, it really has worked with a lot of folks. It affects your body. And then it walks you through these uh, various practice exercises. So, um, and it's an app that you can download. So we can move to the next. Um, organization, uh, talking about stress, you know, being able to be organized. This is one of those um, two for one or three for one kind of deals with, a, with an app. Um, so you can uh, keep all of those in uh, for iOS or Android. And then that way you can save money, stay organized. The reason why we bring this up when we're talking about um, working with students is because a lot of times we're not teaching students uh, early enough, I think, money management and how do you save money and how do you manage life. And so uh, I started working with students in elementary school on some of these things. Um, so let's, uh, you know, get your GameStop um, card, loyalty card. Um, let's get some of the other loyalty cards uh, and, and also learn how do you manage money and how do you save and how do you order a lot of our students. And so we can move to the next. We believe success really breeds success. And so, um, you know, helping people learn those uh, skills and be more confident uh, really does transform and, and translate into the classroom. Um, and not in their, their medicines, um, uh, there's something to understanding, you know, what medicines are you taking? Um, how do you keep track of that? What are the reminders, refills, all of that? Um, the thing we like about this, the, of the medication, um, which is very helpful. A lot of people don't even know, a lot of our students are on medications and they have no idea why. Um, and so once again, and so thinking some of that through. And so we'll move to the next. Basically a shopping list that utilizes pictures, which is really awesome. So basically you can customize different lists um, for different, you know, items. So, um, and so it does have accessibility options built in. Um, so text-to-speech, uh, large print, um, and then the prices are automatically, um, you know, added up for you as well too. And so um, that's, and so if you kind of struggle with organization, um, even getting to some of those images and just being able to relate, you know, what's in the aisle, what's on your app, um, Grocery IQ is one of those that we, I think pretty much almost everybody on the team utilizes. <laughs> yes. um, it's a popular one here with us. Yes, and so we can move to the next. Next slide. This is Clara Read. Um, this is a great piece of software. Um, Clara Read text there's a bar there that actually just sits on your desktop um, and you can move it around. Um, it can read uh, certain documents, PDFs, uh, you know, it can browse online for you, read some of the text there as well. Um, with the 7.0 version, you can add audio notes, you can save uh, your notes as an MP3 file, you can save as video as well too. Um, highlighting features for studying. Um, so Clara Read is a great uh, resource out there. Um, definitely check it out at clarareed.com. And we can jump to the next slide. Uh, text help, I absolutely love. Text is text help, read and write goal, but for very different reasons. Um, but it's got a lot of great features when it comes to improve, improving reading skills. Um, you know, built-in text and picture dictionaries. There's a study skills highlighter. Um, I like that it has word prediction uh, built in um, as well. And so that actually helps to, um, you know, type faster and the words are popping up. It learns your writing style mm -hmm. as well too. Um, so great, great resource in text help. Um, and there is a version for Google. Yeah, it's, it's great too, um, because it's become really a universal design solution. Uh, and so, you don't necessarily see it just uh, in the conversation about learning disabilities or disabilities um, because it's that powerful and that dynamic. It's a verb checker and um, act checker, uh, all of that, very helpful. Um, so, and it really is about this great um, little format, uh, icon based, um, you know, the, the uh, icons themselves that you can play, um, you can move to the next. So um, when we're also talking about, uh, you know, speech recognition, um, there are some free solutions. Um, you know, there are some different solutions when it comes to C, um, and, and a lot of it really has come so far. I remember when we used to have two speech like this. All the time. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, I remember training. Um, yeah. I had somebody help me with training, and they said it was going to be three to four hours, yes. and it was just miserable. And now when you upgrade, um, it's literally you're just calibrating yeah. your voice and microphone, um, and training is maybe 15, 20 minutes max. That's the most. Yeah. 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 I remember some, uh, once again, when we're talking about innovation, um, this is one that's grown by leaps and bounds. And a lot of it's because of crowdsourcing uh, and really getting voices, uh, you know, in mass and being able to correct, um, which is great. So we can move to the next. And um, when we're thinking about 
speech recognition that's built in. Um, really and truly, the Windows uh, version is outstanding. Um, and so people, whenever we're, um, and Liz and I are laughing a little bit about this, because uh, you can tell people who use screen uh, speech recognition a lot, because uh, sometimes when I leave a voice message, I'll say, um, you know, hello, Liz, exclamation mark, how are you, question mark, right, message, period. Um, because I have to totally put all the pronunciation, like in, uh, in punctuation, and I put in, uh, you know, new line and paragraph and all that. Um, but you are, you're writing from a different part of your brain, um, and then if you're physically writing with a pen or if you're typing. And so uh, there's a through that, then gosh, it can make a huge difference in their lives um, when it comes to uh, using bigger words, different words. Um, you know, there are a lot of people that are afraid to use words because they don't how to spell them, but they'll say it. And so uh, you can move to the next. Great resource, exclamation mark. <laughs> I agree, exclamation mark. <laughs> you can move to the next. All right, so Dragon, um, uh, the two that are built in, uh, or three, um, we just went over. Um, so you got iOS, um, you know, Apple. But there is a company um, called Dragon Naturally Speaking, which is now a mainstream company. Uh, you see um, their products are sold in often, and it really does turn spoken words into uh, print, into text. Uh, it, it's amazing how far they've taken this. And so um, when I first got into this field in 1987, 88, um, Dragon cost around $26,000. And now you can get it for less than 1000 for the professional version, which is what we use. Um, but you can get free versions too. So it's incredible what has happened um, and how that has revolutionized uh, you know, the whole Way we do business and that's great so we can move to the next so um i think that uh, another uh when we're talking about innovation um and this is continuing to, um and being able to work collaboratively with folks and being able to um also figure out um you know with images with drawing with uh words um how to come up with a concept we see this all over our campus um mind mapping is huge here at, at georgia tech uh, and really, some of the coolest devices and solutions that exist, words and, and drawing and all of that. Um, we're seeing this also, though, in classrooms and where we can help people write a solid paper, um, get their ideas out using different shapes and colors and, and importing pictures and, and, and using speech recognition to actually help with that, too. And so this is one of those strategies, skills, um, you know, there are solutions out there and it continues. Uh, and so paying attention to that. Uh, all kinds of cool solutions, uh, a lot of them that are built in when it comes to memory and, and reminders. Um, there's, an, uh, you know, obviously the ones here, um, remind on a daily basis. I uh, put things on my calendar all the time and check my calendar constantly. Um, but we often find there are two images down here, um, and then there's another one that's, you know, very peaceful <laughs> and organized. <laughs> and understand, you know, what are the technology solutions that you can use to organize your life, to organize uh, just the way that you um, navigate your, your world. And that, when it comes to making learner more learning more achievable. Um, because then people are available to learn and that's a that's a very important piece um, to all of this so and we can move to the next so there's some really cool stuff that's coming um, and I'm wondering if um, uh, you, you have a it looks like there's a question here uh, let's see I wonder if writing for speech recognition supports computational thinking oh I bet it does um, so when you say computing um, what do you mean tell us a little bit more about that and then we can tell you that yeah I was thinking because you have you said that it's asking your brain to think in a, and write in a different way. Now, building for computational purposes, you're using what I feel having used speech recognition software, that same sort of modular thinking where I have to think about my sentences, think about what the commands are, yes. which is different than the way we think about writing by hand, because we think about it much more in terms of uh, like the way we write yeah. it, you know? So they're all sort of related, but I think this brings out that part of modular writing. That is so cool. Um, I'm going to actually write that down myself. When I say write it down, I'm going to take a picture of it is what I mean. So, um, but yes. And yeah, because I think that's, that's very interesting that space, but that's very interesting. So yeah. Yeah. Thanks for being really do a study about, yes, about yes. that. Yes. So, so we have a lot of ideas um, as to what's new. And, and when we're talking about, you can't really have a conversation about these to a couple of the next slides. Wearables are huge. Um, and uh, they're providing all kinds of insight into how do we navigate uh, our day? How do we figure out, um, you know, when we do things? So when we're talking about um, these wearables, it's incredible where they're headed. Uh, whether it's opening a door um, or making sure that we check our mail or um, a different way to get home, wayfinding, all of that. Um, sleeping patterns. Sleeping patterns, right, exactly. All very helpful. How much time um, we measure through wearables. So uh, these are definitely on the increase. Um, a lot of times people ask us, and there's some images up here of how many here, you know, how many are related to ears and eyes and, you know, wrists and all of that jewelry. 
Um, and this is one that when I was talking to some folks with learning disabilities uh, not terribly long ago, they were very interested in because these this, uh, these solutions, and if you move to the next slide, um, we'll, we'll show you some of these. Um, these are not necessarily, this one's available on the market, um, uh, but not all of them are. Um, what this actually does is it allows for people, it's designed for people with vision-related disabilities, but keep in mind that a lot of these um, cross over into other areas. Um, and so being able to recognize people, being able to read um, text uh, just by holding your head up and so the camera will scan it and it'll read it into your ear. It's pretty darn cool. Yeah. Cool. yeah. So, um, so we can move to the next one. And then this is uh, the one that I was uh, starting to talk about. It uses GPS in your shoes. And so uh, there's a lot of technology that's related to our shoes now and so in our, in our feet. And um, so there, there are some folks that have said, gosh, that would help me so much to be able to use this and be able to navigate. So um, we can move to the next. And so um, this is just another, uh, you know, uh, more information, just an ad, um, but basically what it does to how you should go, um, but it'll actually say, you know, turn to the left, turn to the right, you know, what have you. Um, it syncs up with your phone and you can move to the next. Do you want to talk about this one? Sure. Um, so the tea jacket, what that does is um, actually uh, it provides a snugger fit. Um, it provides a smartphone. So oftentimes folks that we work with um, in the space of autism, cognition, uh, difficulty, um, we deal with anxiety. Um, this vest is something that is absolutely beneficial to them. So you put it on, it can actually, um, you can custom squeeze. Um, and studies have shown that that pressure on your body does help alleviate some of that tension, some of those things we were talking about on the fast track, if you will. Um, and so this is a tea jacket and it does sync up with your smartphone. We, you should be calm. That measures anxiety. Um, this be calm, actually what it does is it uh, helps reduce the people being off track um, and blocks those disturbing noises and all that. Uh, you can just keep moving through. Um, and so reveal uh, is the next one. And basically what it does is it, it starts to measure like those biometric indicators as to if somebody's starting to get anxious or, um, you know, something's going on and helps us better understand behaviors. Uh, you can move to the next. Um, this is Octopus by Joy and it's uh, basically a watch scheduler assistant in Yiddish because yeah. there are a lot of adults I think that would benefit from it. Uh, we've told the company that and so we'll see what happens, um, but it is very icon friendly, which is nice. And uh, you can move to the next and this is helpful, this Apple watch. Um, uh, it, it, price, it prices a lot of people out though because um, it's very spin but uh, it is very helpful. So we're hoping these types of solutions, um, some of the Fitbits you can get for under $100, mm -hmm. and it does similar um, types of things. And so you can move to the next. Very helpful within the classroom, very helpful with us figuring out um, more about our learning and, and, and really thinking about how do we learn, um, which is great. Um, breathe on Apple Watch. Uh, this kind of freaks some people out because it'll actually say breathe, and right. people are like, oh no, I'm not breathing. <laughs> and so, um, but uh, there are some students that I've worked with where this has been very helpful uh, because they're like, gosh, I didn't realize I wasn't breathing. I didn't realize. So that awareness can be very helpful. And so we can move on to the next slide. And um, so what we want to do as we're wrapping up is just encourage people, you know, to, to really, um, you know, know more about technology and explore it. Um, get to know you, you learn and, and, and really listen to other folks. Um, don't be afraid of failure. Um, I fail all the time. And so we evaluate and we evolve. Um, and also encourage folks because we find that success does beat success, no doubt. Um, so explore uh, this, this technology and, and really uh, keep the conversation going. That's what we slide. Um, we have absolutely enjoyed being with you, but we know that you'll probably have some questions, and so here's some resources on technology and disability. Um, rights Law actually has some good information. The Disability Rights, uh, National Disability Rights Network is very helpful. Um, so helping people understand what their rights are. A lot of these actually also have information about education rights, and then and, and let us know what you think, and then we can move on to the next slide. So here's our team. Um, I think we now have two slides of this, so, right? Yeah. <laughs> but um, do uh, keep the conversation going and do let us know how we can assist. I, and Mary Claire, you're so great at always connecting us with other folks. And so thank you for connecting us um, and giving us this opportunity today. Uh, it's, it's exciting um, and when we find that folks will actually take this information and do something with it. So if y'all do that, let us know and uh, really appreciate um, Remake Learning and Learning Disabilities Association, um, what y'all are doing too. So Liz, anything you want to say as we wrap up? Thank you for the opportunity. I just know that we're here yeah. for you. Um, even if you're not in Georgia, we can definitely get you connected with your local resources. Um, and I love presenting with you, Carolyn. So oh, thank you, you know, I love it too. Thank you, Mary Claire, and thank you, Arnie. We thank, you. thank you. Thank you so thank much. You so, so, so much, Mary Claire. Do you, do you have a goodbye for folks? Just um, any questions? I mean, I'm available. Uh, I did not put my email address on. Uh, I will put it on the chat now. And um, if I can connect anybody listening uh, to, to Carolyn and Liz and their team, if anybody has any follow-up questions, we were really excited for this opportunity. And yes. Yeah, and my most sincere thank you to our panelists and to everyone watching. If you uh, have any additional questions or if you're looking to get connected to our wonderful panelists, you can go ask you. Um, it's also great to know that we are reaching folks today here live, but we'll also have the opportunity to reach even more folks in the future. Um, this has been our first Remake Learning
meetup webinar, and we hope to have more in the future. If you have a great idea of content that we should be covering, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. And I think we're going to do sign off for now. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye.